Hello. In this video, I show you how to share folders in Windows 10 using the SMB protocol. First, let's check the network settings on the machine to be used as the SMB server. Open Control Panel. Go to Start Windows System and click Control Panel. Click Network and Internet and then Network and Sharing Center and change Advanced Sharing Settings. Enable the options required for file sharing for the network profile you're using. I'm using the private profile. Click Turn on Network Discovery and turn on File and Printer Sharing. The public profile is currently selected. I will select the private network profile next. Click Save Changes. Let's change to the private profile. Go to Start Settings. Click Network and Internet. Click Properties under your network adapter. As I configured sharing settings for the private network profile, I select the private profile here. Let's go back. In Advanced Sharing Options, my current profile has been changed to private. Now, I can create users to configure access to shared folders. Right-click my computer or this PC and click Manage in the context menu. The Computer Management window opens. Go to Local Users and Groups and click Users. Let's create new Windows user accounts to access file shares. Right-click the empty space in the User's Management window and click New User. Enter the username, enter the password and confirm the password. Select checkboxes for desired password management options for the current user. Click Create. Similarly, create other users if you want to provide access to multiple users. Let's create user 11, user 12, user 13, and user 14. Once all needed user accounts are created, you can close this window. The four users have been created successfully. Created users are automatically added to the users group in Windows. You can check the users group in the groups section. Let's create a new group for more convenient management of users accessing file shares. Administration of groups is more efficient than managing a large number of individual users when access permissions are the same for all. Right-click the empty place in the groups window and click new group. Enter the group name, for example, share group one. Optionally, enter a description. Then click add. Enter the user you wanna to add to the group. Click check name. If the full name is underlined, then the name is correct. Click OK. Then add the other users the same way. I'm adding user 11, user 12, and user 13 to the group. The three users have been added. Click Create to finish creating a group. The new group has been created. You can double-click the group to check the users that are group members. Now, I can create a folder and share this folder. I am creating the Shares folder to create multiple shared folders inside. I'll create a subfolder called Share01. Right-click the folder you want to share and click Properties in the context menu. Go to the Sharing tab and click Advanced Sharing. Click Share this folder and then Permissions. By default, the folder is shared with everyone with read-only permissions. Click Add to add a user or group to share the folder with. Enter the name of the group created earlier and click Check Names. If the group name is correct, click OK. Let's enable full control for our group in the Permissions section. For strict control, you can delete folder sharing for the everyone group. Instead, I will share this folder with read-only permissions with user 14. When SMB permissions are configured for a shared folder, you can close the permissions window. Click OK. Go to the Security tab to configure NTFS permissions for the shared folder at the file system level. Click Edit. Click Add to add a user or group to configure NTFS permissions. Let's enter the group name, share group 1 in my case. Click Check Names, and if the name is correct, click OK. Let's click the group and click Full Control to grant full read-write permissions to users who are members of this group. Similarly, let's add User 14 and enable read-only permissions for this user. The read permissions are enabled by default after adding a user or group in the file system permission settings. I have configured NTFS permissions, and I can close this window by clicking OK. To see the network path to the shared folder, go to the Sharing tab and check the displayed path. You can use the host name or the host's IP address in the network path to access a shared folder. You can check the IP address of the machine with the shared folder in the command line using the ipconfig command. The IP address is 192.168.101.209 in this case. You can also ensure that the folder is shared and display a list with shared folders on this machine with the netshare command. Before I proceed, let me quickly tell you about Nikivo Backup and Replication and how it can help you protect both your file shares on NAS, Windows, and Linux machines. 
Nikivo Backup and Replication is a comprehensive data protection solution that you can use to protect all your workloads from a single pane of glass. Whether it's file shares, VMware, Proxmox, Hyper-V, physical servers, or Microsoft 365, backups can be protected against cyber threats like ransomware with immutability and encryption. Once a backup is created, you have multiple instant recovery options. You can learn more about the solution by going to www.nikivo.com. Next, I will show you how to connect to this shared folder from another computer. Let's open another Windows 10 machine that is used as an SMB client to connect to the shared folder stored on the first machine. Open Windows Explorer and click the address bar. Enter double slash and then the IP address of the first Windows 10 machine where the shared folder is configured. The credentials to access the shared folder are requested in the window that opens. This is because the username on the SMB client machine is different from any user on the SMB server machine. Enter the credentials of the user who has access to the shared folder configured on the first machine. Let's log in as user 12. This user is a member of share group 1. I've successfully opened the shared folder. Let's create a new folder to check the right access. We can also create a test text file. The right permissions are working properly for the user and shared folder. You can check SMB sessions, connected users and open files on the first Windows 10 machine acting as an SMB server in this case. After entering the net sessions command, I can see that user 12 is connected to the shared folder. You can also do it in the computer management window. Click shared folders to expand the corresponding section. I can check shares, sessions with connected users and open files. You have the option to close SMB sessions. I can restart the server service on the machine with shared folders and this will close all sessions. After that, SMB clients may need to enter the credentials to access shared folders even if they had entered the credentials previously. I can also check the read-only access to the shared folder for user 14. Let's connect to the shared folder from the second Windows 10 machine acting as the SMB client. Let's enter user 14 as the username and enter the user's password. If I try to create a new folder in the shared folder, I get an error because user 14 has read-only access. The same happens if I try to create a new file. Changes to the existing files cannot be saved because the access is read-only. Even if I press Ctrl S to save changes, the changes cannot be saved with read-only permissions. This means that access to the shared folder works as it should in this example. As you can see, I logged in to the second Windows machine as user 1. When I connect to the file share from the second machine acting as the SMB client to the first machine acting as the SMB server in this scenario, I need to enter the credentials of users existing on the SMB server machine. There is no user 1 on the first machine in my example. That's why the credentials are requested to connect to the shared folder. Windows does not request credentials to access the file share if the username and password on the SMB server are the same as the username and password of the user logged into Windows machine acting as the SMB client. I'll log off and log on to my second Windows machine to configure it to open the shared folder without entering the credentials. Permissions for this user must also be configured in shared folder permissions and NTFS permissions. As I mentioned earlier, the credentials are requested for connecting to the shared folder because user 1 doesn't exist on the SMB server and permissions are not configured for this user in shared folder properties. To bypass entering the credentials, I have to create user 1 with the same password on the SMB server that is on my first Windows 10 machine. To create a user, go to Local Users and Groups and click Users. Right-click the empty place in the Users window and click New User in the Context menu. User 1 is the username. Enter the same password for user 1 as it is on the second machine, which is my SMB client in this example. Click Create. User 1 has been created on my first machine. Let's add this user to share group 1 to grant them full access to the shared folder. This is more convenient than configuring permissions for user 1 manually in shared folder properties. As permissions for this group have been already configured before, I just add a user to the group to grant the same permissions. User 1 is now a member of share group 1 together with user 11, user 12 and user 13 who have full access to the shared folder. Now, 
Let's try to access the shared folder from the second Windows 10 machine once again. As you can see, I did not enter the credentials for user1 because user1 exists on the SMB server with the same password. User1 is a member of the group with full access to the shared folder. I can write changes to existing files, create new files and folders in the file share. That is what I needed. The session of user1 connected to the shared folder is displayed on the first machine. For more convenience, I can map a network drive to access the shared folder. In this case, it is not necessary to enter the address to the shared folder in the address bar. Once connected to a remote host acting as a file server, select the shared folder. Right-click the shared folder and click Map Network Drive. Select a drive letter. I leave the reconnect at Sign-in checkbox. Click Finish. A mapped network drive is now displayed in Windows Explorer. There is one more method to share a folder in Windows 10. Right-click my computer or this PC and click Manage in the context menu. Go to Shared Folders Shares. Right-click the empty place in the Shared Folder window and click New Share. The Create a Shared Folder wizard opens. Click Next. Enter the folder path or click Browse and select a folder. Let's create a new folder called Share02. Go to the next step. You can edit the share name and enter the description. Click Next. Click Customize Permissions and click Custom. Configure the SMB permissions as explained earlier. In this example, I'll configure the same permissions for my share group and user 14. The group has full permissions and user 14 has read-only permissions. Once you have set permissions for the shared folder, click Finish and close the wizard. Right-click the second shared folder and click Open to open the folder in Windows Explorer. Set the NTFS permissions like you did the first shared folder. Right-click the shared folder and click Properties. Go to the Security tab and click Edit. Click Add to add the groups and users you want to share the folder with. Enter a group name, click Check Names, and if the name is correct, click OK. Select the appropriate checkboxes to configure the NTFS permissions you need. Click OK to save the settings and finish. That's all. I have shared two folders in the graphical user interface of Windows 10. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch new uploads. Don't forget to protect your data wherever it resides, whether in virtual environments, in the cloud, or on physical servers. Nikivo Backup and Replication is a universal backup solution that delivers flexible deployment on different platforms, fast and efficient backups, and instant recoveries for the shortest recovery objectives. You can easily try the solution in your own environment by downloading the free trial and get access to all the advanced backup, disaster recovery, and ransomware protection features for 15 days.